Hi there, everybody, and thanks for joining us today for our webinar, Explore Motion with Vernier Video Analysis. My name is Nate Shelley from Vernier Software and Technology, and joining us today are my colleagues Fran Poudry, Director of Physics at Vernier, who will be taking us on a tour of video analysis, along with Jake Hopkins, our Director of Support, who will help field your questions. We know everyone on this webinar has been impacted by campus closures, and so we want to help support you and your students with tools like video analysis. This webinar is being recorded, so you attendees will be able to view it again afterwards, and we'll make the webinar available to view offline after today on our website at vernier.com. Also, I wanted to point out that there's no chat option during the webinar, but to your right, you should all have a questions tab in the GoToWebinar control panel that you can use to ask your questions during this webinar. Jake will help with the questions, and we'll also have some dedicated time for Q&A near the end of this webinar. Any questions that we're not able to answer today, we will follow up with you over email. And now without further delay, let's get started. Let's meet our presenters. Fran has over 20, experience, 20 years of experience teaching various levels of physics at schools in Pennsylvania, New, New Jersey, from conceptual physics to AP Physics C, before joining Vernier as our Director of Physics. And Jake, our Director of Support, has been instrumental in developing and testing our physics sensors and our curriculum at Vernier, and he regularly leads both in-person and online workshops for our science teachers. Okay, without further ado, take it away, Fran and Jake. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, so let's see, what is Vernier Video Analysis? Uh, so that'll be one of the things we talk about. We'll talk about benefits of using Vernier Video Analysis as a remote learning resource. Um, we'll do an overview of videos, graphs, and data analysis using the software uh, with some tips on how to get the most out of these resources, and then we'll do some Q&A. So what is it? Uh, it's a site license for a piece of software that allows the use of any device with a browser, uh, and that includes Chromebooks, to analyze motion in videos, and you place points at the locations of, of an object in successive video frames. Um, so back in the day, uh, we used to do this by putting transparencies on a CRT TV screen, uh, and then we would use a wet erase marker, and we'd like put dots on the screen, and we didn't have like a ruler that you need to lay across and put a scale on. Um, so this is just like that, except the computer does it, so it's a ton easier. Um, and we don't have to worry about trying to step through a VHS tape step by step by step. Um, so until this particular product, software solutions have been mainly restricted to Windows and Mac computers. Uh, so this uh, is different because it's a progressive web app. Uh, so you have to use it in a browser, such as Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. Uh, you have to be connected to the internet when you first open it, which is a little bit different. Uh, but then once you've opened it on your device, any device that you're using, you can still use it offline. So you don't have to be online all the time. Uh, that'll last for like two weeks, and then it kind of has to check in, make sure the code is still current and stuff. So it, you will need to connect again after two weeks go by. Um, so progressive web apps are probably not something that everyone has necessarily used, um, but I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it. A uh, couple points, you do want to make sure that your um, your browser is at its most up to date. So if it's not working, one of the first things to try is to update your browser. Uh, let's see. So what are the benefits? Um, again, wherever you are, as long as you have a device with a browser, whether it's a tablet or a phone or a computer or a Chromebook, uh, we include sample videos uh, as well as a few student experiments for free. Um, 
we uh, and and you can get those directly off of our website, off of the video analysis page, and we'll remind you of that URL afterwards. Uh, this software is useful at all levels of physics. I definitely had my conceptual level students using the uh, the iPhone app uh, video physics back in the day. You know, conceptual students, we don't use a lot of math, but anyone can see that, oh, well, when the points are doing this on the, gra on the video, then the graph goes up. And so when you get that slope and they can figure out, oh, well, this slope is going to be faster than that slope. And they can get this idea even at the conceptual level. And you can also use this you know, at the regular high school level, AP, college level. It's very versatile. Uh, students can do experiments that can't be done with sensors. It's very hard, for example, to use sensors to look at a parabolic trajectory. It's going to go in and out of the field of view of a motion detector. So by having it as a video, you can really see what's going on, and it's much quicker and easier. And then once you've put the points on the video, you've immediately got a graph in the data table. The students are immediately able to analyze and think critically about their collected data. Um, and just, you know, also what you can't do with a motion detector if you had like videos of cars driving past on the road, for example, you're not going to put motion detectors out there. Uh, <laughs> it's not a good idea. But you can certainly take videos even through a window, and if you know how long a given car is, you can then determine how fast it's going. Um, so I'm going to show you some stuff. In order to do that, I'm going to turn off my screen so you'll see, I uh, turn off my camera so you'll see uh, the whole app in the screen. All right, so here's what you see when you open up Vernier Video Analysis. You get this screen uh, that allows you to import video from your phone or computer. So whatever device you're using, you'll all want to have a video available. Uh, we have a lot of sample videos that are available, and these you can just uh, go ahead and um, click on and put in. So these are not going to go away. They may change. Uh, so, for example, I can tell you I recently made a better fan cart video in which I'm not there <laughs> right in the screen. So you'll, you'll, you'll see that, but you'll be able to, you know, essentially do the exact same experiment. I'm going to use this one. Uh, this one is uh, called Coffee Filters, and it's a a uh, series of coffee filters that got dropped. We had this video professionally made for us by the creators of Pivot Interactive, uh, and we give it to you here. So I'm going to go ahead and click and load that video in. And you immediately have the video in your software uh, right there on the screen along with your graph and your uh, data table. So what are we going to do? First thing we're going to do is put some points on a falling object. I'm going to choose this uh, two coffee filters one, and I'm going to scooch forward a few frames until I'm sure that that thing has been released. I'm pretty sure it's been released here. Uh, and then it's moving really slowly right now. So I'm going to make things a little easier on myself and use the advanced video options gear over here on the bottom right. And when I click on that, I can choose to advance frames by some number other than one. And I'm going to choose uh, 10 for this one just to make the demonstration go a little quicker. You could choose any number, obviously, and you may need to guide your students uh, as to what's the most appropriate. So I'm choosing 10 frames. And I'm going to go ahead and make a mark at the bottom of the coffee filters. 
and it immediately advances 10 frames and I can move the crosshairs and place another dot right at the bottom of the coffee filter. It immediately advances another 10 frames. Uh, and so I'm going to just do this a few times. Uh, when I move quickly on the screen, that might make the video look a little choppy for you. Uh, I apologize for that. But I just want to get a bunch of dots here so that we can see what's going on. All right, I think that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and also set the scale of this video. I don't know how easy it is to see on your screen, but if you look at the graph or at the data table, you'll see that the units for x and y are px. And in the data table, the units for velocity are px per second. PX stands for pixels, and it just means that I haven't set a scale here. And I conveniently have a scale on this video uh, that's marked in centimeters. So when I click the scale button, I get some objects here. This is the scale bar. And I can just put it to 100 centimeters, which is one meter. And that's automatically what is expected at the top of the screen. I don't have to use that. I can also make it, oh, well, maybe I want to use the full 140 centimeters. This gives me just you know, a slightly better scale just because I've got a longer distance. Doesn't actually probably matter that much. But I'm going to go ahead and put in 1.4 meters. And then I can move the uh, axis origin wherever I want. Uh, I could also, if I wanted to, I could put the origin way up at the top and actually move this so I've got the X direction pointing straight down. So now I've got actually a positive velocity in the X direction. You might not want that. It's just a possibility. I'm actually going to go ahead and move it back because I don't mind having negative velocity in the y direction and i'm just going to move this back down to the corner out of the way because i don't actually care where it is um, and in some cases you will care and in some cases you won't um, so again my screen may look really jerky to you because we're in this webinar thing in real life it act when you're doing it on your screen it'll move a lot more slowly a lot more um, smoothly than that, so I apologize. Uh, so another thing I wanted to do with this, because this is a pretty cool uh, experiment, I'm going to add another uh, object to the, my analysis. I'm going to click go back to my very first point, and I'm going to add a second object. So now I have object two. So object two, I'm going to choose this coffee filter over here. I'm going to go ahead and I haven't changed the setting on uh, number of frames, so it's still advancing by 10 frames every time I place a dot. You can already see that you know, the same amount of time the set of four coffee filters has moved more than the set of two coffee filters that I tracked before. And I'm just going to go until I have the same number of points. All right. So you can see 
on my screen that I now have four sets of dots. It's a little bit confusing. I'm going to get rid of the X dots because that doesn't really matter. Uh, and you can see that while the two sets of coffee filters start at the same height, uh, they travel different distances, and in fact, the lines will have different final slopes. Uh, you can change the color of the points you're using. Um, on my screen, as I see it, these look like two fairly distinct shades of the color blue, but you could change one of them to red, one of them to green. Uh, there's however many colors your device is going to allow you to choose. Um, so on a computer, the color picker lets me pick from you know what seems like infinite colors. I'm sure it's not quite that, but it's a lot. So I now have two objects in my graph to be analyzed, and I can analyze these a couple of different ways. Um, I want to make my graph bigger so you can see it, and there's two ways to do that. I can either move the little handle and make that bigger or smaller and i can move this handle up or down but i could also go and change the view so this uh, box that's divided in three parts is the view options menu and i'm just going to get rid of the video and get rid of the data table so i just have this one giant graph um, i'm actually going to make that two graphs and now I have an x velocity graph and x2 velocity graph, and um, I don't want x, I want y. A y velocity graph and a y2 velocity graph. And this might be a little hard for you to see, so I'm going to change the view a little bit. If you have used our graphical analysis free app, this uh, works very similar to that in that this is a little graph tools menu in the bottom left corner of each graph. And you can change the appearance by choosing edit graph options. So I'm going to have both points and lines. I'm also going to have the y-axis range always scale from zero. So that's for my position, and I can do the same thing for my velocity, where I can show both points and lines, and I can always scale from zero. And now it's just with the zeros showing, it's a little more obvious that all my velocities are actually negative velocities here. And it's very clear that I have two distinct negative velocities for the final terminal velocities of these coffee filters. In fact, I might want to know what those are. And I'm just going to select those final few points and view the statistics on these. And that's going to give me a little box that gives me the average and the standard deviation. It's only four samples, but for the lighter blue one, which was the two coffee filters, I get an average of negative 1.66 meters per second. And for the darker blue, which was the four coffee filters, I get an average of negative 0.234 meters per second. So that's pretty cool. I can also look at what those slopes would be on the position graphs. So here, I'm going to apply the curve fit. Linear is the uh, is the default, but I've got a lot of choices in this menu, but I do want to keep linear for these particular segments. So I will apply those, and now I get the slopes for these. The light blue slope is negative one point excuse me, negative point one six six nine meters per second, which you'll remember is practically identical to the statistics from the corresponding velocity graph. And for the dark blue line, the slope is negative 0 0.2367, uh, which again is very, very close to the average given by the statistics on the velocity graph. That's pretty cool. I also want to show you what you can do with the data table. 
uh, we've had some questions from people that show uh, that are they're like, okay, so can I export this data table someplace? And the answer is not right now, uh, but you can certainly do some additional analysis on the data within the data table. For example, doing a calculated column. So specifically, I might want to look at the acceleration uh, data for this particular example. So I'm going to create a new calculated column here, and I did that by clicking on the three little dots that are in the column heading. And so you can name that whatever you want. I'm going to call that Y acceleration, and that's going to be in meters per second per second. And then I have the opportunity to insert an expression. Again, these are very similar to the ones that you see in graphical analysis um, with a couple little changes, but you know, very similar. And the first derivative, I'm going to take the first derivative of the velocity data uh, with respect to time. And because I clicked in the velocity data to begin with, it kind of does that automatically. Uh, it always assumes that the derivative is going to be with respect to the first column of your data table, and it's taking the y, the, the column that you clicked in to be the variable that you're using to determine the derivative of. So I apply this, and now I have an acceleration column. I'm going to real quick add that to the y2 velocity as well. And then I'm going to go back to my graph. I'm going to do one graph. Uh, I'm going to do one graph. Well, I guess I'm going to have two graphs here. But one of them is going to be uh, the looking at the acceleration. And so here, Obviously, acceleration as the third, sorry, the second derivative of the position data is going to be a little wonky, especially since we uh, do a numerical derivative rather than a calculus derivative. But you can see that the acceleration as the coffee filters approach terminal velocity gets closer and closer to zero in both cases. So that's an example of just some additional uh, analysis you can do with uh, this particular software. Let me just get everything back here. All right. So additional information. For example, how do you get support? So first thing, up here in the upper right corner, other options, is three dots. I'm going to click on that, and when I click on that, I'm going to access the user manual. Trying to make that big enough for you to see. All right, so here's the user manual. Uh, we should have another version of this coming out next week when we have a, a newer version of video analysis. Uh, that's something that we uh, are continuing to update the app, and so we're also continuing to update the user manual. The user manual includes a section on getting started as well as a section on just analyzing your video. One of the things in getting started is how do you distribute this software to your colleagues and students? So you can find that in here. Uh, you need to go to the app and a nice bigger view of that menu. In addition to user manual in the three dot menu, there's this additional option called distribute app. So when you click on that, you get your license key. And your license key is in the form of a link. You copy that link by clicking on the button, and then you can go ahead and send that to your colleague or your students by email or by text message, or you can put it in a chat. 
you can, um, if you're going to post it uh, for students to click on on a website, please make sure that it's password protected. So it's something like your um, LMS software, whether it's Moodle or Canvas or whatever it is that you use, uh, that it is something that students have to enter a password to get to because you've purchased this license. You're not to share that with students at additional schools other than your own. Uh, so you can also do things like search the technical library. Let me see if I can find, uh, here we are. Here's our website. Uh, in a moment, we'll see the website. <laughs> um, so that this is where you go to get uh, video analysis in the first place. You can purchase it or you can sign up for the free trial. To sign up for the tree free trial that's on this tab here. Um, but say you need support. You can look up things in our ah. That was my phone being weird. Sorry. Uh, can you still hear me? Yeah, we can still hear anyway. you. Drop for a second there, but you're back in now. Awesome. Okay. So FAQs and troubleshooting tips. Uh, this brings you to our tech info library where we have a whole bunch of frequently asked questions. Uh, I'm gonna, let's see, how do I go back here? There we are. Um, so you can also, uh, get in touch with us by email, support at vernier.com or um, physics at vernier.com if you specifically have physics related questions with using the software. Uh, there's our toll free number. You can call us even though we're all working remotely. We'll still get your phone calls. And there's this also button down at the bottom right of your screen whenever you're on our website that says chat with us. And that will open up chat window as long as it's during business hours for us out on the West Coast. And we will be happy to help you with these. Um, so just so you know, the free trial uh, is good through June of 2020. So that's uh, if you sign up now, you get like a month and a half. If you know, starting you know next month, uh, like if you bought it, or sorry, if you signed up for the free trial on like June 27th, it's not going to expire at the end of June. We would actually give you a, a full 30 days of free trial. That's how that works. Um, and if you were to buy it, then it's actually good all the way through the end of June of 2021. Uh, and this special first year site license pricing is just $49. And that is, you know, for the site license that allows you to share it with all of your colleagues and students on your campus, uh, we think that's a pretty good deal as we continue to add features to this app. Uh, in the future, it will not be at that low price. The final price for the future has not been set yet. So, so Fran, we had a we had a couple of uh, questions and comments on chat there. If you want to switch back into the app there, um, we yeah. had one person say that they they really like the distance between the points is increasing, and that that is a nice visual for the students to see. Uh, and they were wondering if there are other examples where you can see that same um, increase in distance uh, from point to point. Yeah. So in the sample videos that we show. Um, the one with the fan cart and the one with the ball drop would both show nice increasing distances. Um, let me just go ahead and turn my camera back on here. Hello. <laughs> um, so you'll you'll see this with the ball drop and with the uh, fan cart, and also when you do the uh, basketball toss one for projectiles, you will see the dots get closer together and farther apart as you put them on the basketball. So another question here of uh, do I have to use your sample movies or can I make my own? 
great question. You can certainly make your own video. Um, when you load them into video analysis, you want to have them easily accessible from your device. So for example, if you're using a Chromebook, you could have them either in your Google Drive that you're also signed into when you're signed into Chrome, or you could have them in the Files app on the Chromebook itself. Uh, and you would just click on that import video button that you see when you first open the app, and that takes you to um, the file manager of your device, and you can find your video from there. Um, yeah, and that's that's actually one of my favorite things is seeing how people use this. Is the the students tend to get really creative when they make their own. Um, and way back when we first started doing digital video, you needed all sorts of special equipment. But now you actually have a pretty nice camera. Most people have one in their pocket, so you can really make some some pretty nice videos with with just your phone. And you don't really need a special setup, um, and you can do a lot of analysis on it. Um, yeah, there's just uh, people get nice and creative with it. It's uh, it's it's fun to see what all what all people do when they analyze their own videos. Um, there's another question, Fran. If you can switch back into the app, um, about where did you go to uh, to change the color? Now, I'll forewarn you that in our dress rehearsal, because this shows something from both the operating system and the app, that the layer that popped up didn't pop up, but we'll I, but I think we're sharing it a different way than I I, I think it will show up. But, We'll see. Yeah, it might or it might not. So in the objects uh, menu over on the left hand side, um, when you click on the object, you get a chance to oh. change yep. the color. Did it, did it show up? Yeah, it shows up. Op 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 -head. Awesome. I can see this uh, and I can change it to red. I can change it to, you know, nice bright pink or some sort of uh, bright lime green, orange. I could make it a very hard to see pale yellow. There's, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. The, uh, the, the, one of the neat things about the way that it's doing that also is that because it's this progressive web app, we've used that term a couple of times, it's using some really slick stuff that wasn't available just a few years ago in, in browsers and the color picker that's uh, brands on a Mac so you saw the, the Mac OS standard way to choose colors and you have the whole literally the whole rainbow it's like millions of colors that you can choose from um, and you'd see a different one if you were on Windows versus Chrome because that's a standard operating system provided thing so uh, the question is like you know how many colors you can get it's basically whatever your device will support which is which is pretty cool um, so uh, another one um, a question about exporting, um, so about getting mm -hmm. the data out somewhere else. Um, so you said that that's not in there yet. Can you talk a little bit about getting the data from this to somewhere else? Right. So let me just pull up the data table again here. Uh, so I can select all of this data just like you can select any data, uh, like any text on a screen. And if I use my... Uh, copy command. Um, I can choose the copy command and then I can paste that data elsewhere, but there isn't another way to export it at this time. Uh, you all, you're in graphical analysis, if you were using that app, in the upper left corner here, you would see uh, export as one of the options on your um, sort of file menu here, but we don't. We just have new experiment and save as on this video analysis app. You can save these. Uh, it's a .amdl file, and you can then open it again on any device that you're using the app on. So I can save it on my Mac, uh, email it to myself, open it on my iPad or my Chromebook, whatever. Uh, and unlike Logger Pro, uh, Logger Pro always had a, uh, a link to a file. And then you had to kind of get those two pieces together, whereas in video analysis, it's just you just need the one piece because students would always forget to include both pieces. So these are actually it's pretty for, uh, pretty portable in terms of the way it's set up. But like if you wanted to get that into Excel right now, friend could just hit copy, switch to Excel, hit paste, and all the numbers are there. It's just not a way yep. to export it to pipe it to a file. But that part's coming later. Um, 
So another question here from uh, from Dewey Dykstra, Fran. Uh, is it oh, Linda to Chrome? Or is that... I was like, I'm pretty sure she knows Dewey Dykstra. Uh, and uh, I have met him at a workshop at Dickinson years ago. Uh, so Dewey asked, is it limited to Chrome or is that just an example? Uh, you can also use it on Safari or on Firefox. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily trust it on Edge. You might be able to. Definitely not Internet Explorer. Yeah, or like Opera, some of the sort of like there are there are a lot of kind of hybrid browsers out there. We've tested it on the main one. So your device, unless you've especially hot rotted it in some way, is very likely to have one of the browsers that runs, you know, 85% of the internet. Um, and that's another nice part about it is uh, you can you can interchange files between students that have mixed operating systems. Um, if they're on a Android or iOS, uh, it works the same um, because it's all running in the browser and uh, isn't something you have to install, which is another nice part. Uh, what else? How is this different so than video? Oh, what? How is it different than video physics for iPad? Ah, so there are several differences. Sorry. Uh, so first of all. You buy a site license rather than buying individual copies of the apps through the app store. So you buy the site license directly from us for this, and the site license will run out after a year, unlike the video physics iPad app where you bought it and you had to buy one for every device you want to put it on, but once you bought it, that license does not run out because it's not a license. Uh, second thing, uh, you, on the, iPad app video physics, right now they have a feature where it will do auto tracking. We do not have auto tracking in this app yet. That is a future planned feature. Um, so do look for that feature in the future, but that app does not exist yet. Um, also, uh, that app can export a video that is like it shows you the video it shows you the dots appearing oh, yeah. on the video and then it flashes up the graph you know it traps up four different graphs this does not have that feature either uh so that um if you really want that feature sooner uh please definitely write to us physics at vernier.com and say hey i really want this feature in vernier video analysis uh, and then we would be more interested in implementing that as well. So that's just a, a couple differences. Uh, you know, the rest of the differences are mostly uh, visual. So I wanted to <clears throat> jump in and just point out to the audience that this is our Q and A time. And if there's any additional questions for Fran or for Jake about Vernier video analysis, go ahead and ask them in the questions tab. That's in your uh, go to webinar control panel. Um, there's one I see, Fran, about the experiments. I, I noticed that there was an experiments mm -hmm. tab oh, on Vernier Video Analysis. Yes, let me go to that. So, yes, there is a tab on here labeled experiments. And if I click on that, the, we have developed three experiments that you can download for free uh, to get started. These experiments all use the sample videos that are included with the app. Uh, one's on accelerated motion, and that uses the fan cart video. One's on projectile motion, and that uses the basketball toss video. And one's on terminal velocity, which is based on the coffee filter video that I was demonstrating with. Uh, so yeah. so and. We are thinking about having an actual book of experiments. Uh, and if we were to put out such a book, then these three experiments that are available for free would also be available in that book. I know a question that some people have is, is do I have to renew this site license? The answer is yes. Um, so, the license that you buy gives you access to a certain date 
Uh, and that's going to be in general June of the following year. So that's why if you buy the site license this year, it's access to the end of June of 2021. Then at that point, if you wanted to continue using it, you would have to buy another site license for another year. Um, so we had a question there about, can webcams produce good enough quality videos to use for video analysis? Um, so I can I can take that one if you want. Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, it's sort of a, it depends on the the experiment really. So uh, some webcams uh, will only produce very low frame rates, uh, but it it depends on the it depends on the experiment. If you really just if something is not moving as fast, it'll be fine. But most webcams, if you put enough light on the subject, will actually give you sharper images because what happens is they they adjust the exposure time. So if something's moving really fast, it could be blurry. But if you have enough light on it, then the shutter is only open and closed for a, a much shorter amount of time, and you get more crisp images. So you're better able to analyze it. So one of the things that we have in our in our help docs is uh, is how to make a good video for video analysis. Um, and there's some tips and tricks in there around uh, how to uh, how to get a a video that's good for physics is not necessarily the same as a video that's good for um, you know, watching, uh, broadcast, uh, something you share with your family and friends or a TikTok. Uh, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a very specific thing. And one of the big ones is keeping the action, uh, in the same plane as the lens that you're, that you're shooting. Uh, that way, it, you know, it's not zooming towards you or zooming away and the, the scale changes. Uh, but the camera itself, your average cheap camera now nowadays is way better uh, than even an expensive camera from you know from 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, and by far the most common thing that people use to shoot is the the camera that's in their phone, because any any camera any almost any camera in a phone that's less than three or four years old is pretty darn good. Yeah, another thing though is. This app does not have a way for you to control the webcam. So you can't do capture from within the app. Uh, so you would have to still be using some other app to do the capturing of the video and then bring that into video analysis. Wait a question. Uh, can you delete or change points? Ooh, excellent question. Uh, so let me go back to the app and let's see. So yeah, there's a button up here called Edit. Uh, and if I kind of just show just the video here, that's nice and big. If I choose Edit and then I grab one of these points, I can either move it all the way down here to the trash can or I can just move it around to wherever I want. It's a little bit, if I actually go back to where that was, then that makes a little bit more sense when I'm editing. It's like, oh, I didn't really actually want it at that point. I wanted it at that point. Okay, fine. Um, similarly, maybe over here, I didn't want this at the back edge. Maybe I wanted it sort of in the middle of the bottom of the coffee filter. So yes, you can move them around, you can delete them entirely, um, you can, you know, whatever you need to do. So another one, uh, uh, if you would uh, switch to the uh, the velocity graph there, uh, Dewey Dykstra actually asked another question. On the velocity graph, it looks like the last four points on the object has reached terminal velocity but the second has not reached terminal velocity until the last three points. Would you agree? And how would you deal with this if students brought it up? Uh, now you're asking me like a pedagogy question. <laughs> um, let's bring back the velocity graph here. So, yeah, in fact, if you look at the linear fit, because I didn't delete the linear fit from either of these, it's clear that those last three points are not at a constant velocity regardless. Um, let me get rid of those fits. So the way that uh, 
the way the velocity is calculated is it's a numerical integral based on the point that you're looking at, the two points to either side of that, the two points to either side of that, and the two points to either side of that. Uh, so it's actually seven points that are brought into the calculation. That means that the last couple points on any velocity graph that you create using the software are going to be suspect. Um, you will see, especially if you had something that was actually at constant velocity, you would see that the beginning of the velocity graph and the end of the velocity graph would have sort of a, a little bit of a curve to them on either end. Um, and that is because of this numerical derivative calculation. So I would say that probably these two points on the two copy filters would be the closest to representing the terminal velocity. And I would say that on the four copy filters, maybe I haven't even gotten there yet. I don't actually know. And probably what I should do is I should actually collect more data from this to be able to get a better result. Okay, and that uh, that exact effect we've seen in uh, different software over the years too of when you're doing the calculation that's mm -hmm. based on multiple points, um, and then how we deal with it is uh, that that is a, a good pedagogical question because there in some versions of the software when we're when we plot velocity in real time like from a motion detector, there have been cases where the velocity point move it gets plotted and then it moves based on new data that came in, and we said ew no that's not. Uh, it's better to plot it a little bit late than to have it plot and then move because that tells the students that it's that it's it changed somehow afterwards. Um, so anyway, there's a lot of ways a lot of ways to do that, and yes, that gets into to more math. So so right now uh, it's not a feature where you could change that seven point numerical derivative. Uh, in the future, that might be something that you can change within this app. In Logger Pro, you can change that. Uh, the minimum number of points you can use for the numerical derivative, derivative is three points. Uh, and you can use, you know, I think it's the default is seven, but you can do 13 or basically any odd number. Uh, you probably can't do like, you know, a thousand and one, but you, know, you could pick a lot. And essentially the result is the more you choose, the more points you use in that calculation, the smoother that derivative curve is, uh, and the fewer points you use, the uh, more jiggity-jaggity it is. Jiggity-jaggity is an official science word. Is, it, is that a science word or is that a technical, is that more of a software term? It's, well, I'm using it to describe a graph, and a graph is a tool of science. Okay. Jiggity-jaggity. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, Fran and Jake, it, it looks like we've gotten to all of the questions uh, from the audience here that I can see. Uh, so it looks like we might be able to wrap up a little bit early. Um, but I wanted to thank you and uh, you guys for your awesome presentation and all the attendees for watching our webinar. And as a reminder, this webinar is recorded and will be posted on vernier.com slash remote hyphen learning. So you and your colleagues can view it at any time. And on that same page, we have a link to Vernier Video Analysis, so you can sign up for a free trial and get started. Thanks, everybody. Do I tell time to tell my joke? I have a joke. Sorry, Fran, go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, this I always told this joke every year to my students, and so I just, you know, in case it's one you don't know, I needed to tell you, and it's the one where you ask, um, so what was the last thing that went through the bug's mind uh, when it hit the windshield? I would always tell this, like, either when we were talking about Newton's third law and how the forces have to be the same on both the bug and the windshield, uh, or some, or if we were doing conservation momentum problems, and I, I, I might tell it for that. Um, but have you thought of the answer? Uh, it's windshield but. class? It's what? <laughs> it's but. <laughs> It's especially if you do it early in the year, the kids can be kind of astonished because you said but. But I don't think but's a bad word, so.
<laughs> good, good tip for starting the upcoming school year with the students. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for attending our webinar. And thank you, Fran and Jake, for your time today. That was an awesome presentation. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, and let us know if you have any questions. Sounds good.